Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing sweet and tipsy wings. Now, the reason why I call them sweet and tipsy wings is because their recipe calls for some alcohol and brown sugar. So when you mix the alcohol and the brown sugar, you get sweet and tipsy. Now it's more to this recipe than just alcohol and brown sugar. So don't go mixing alcohol and brown sugar think you got sweet and tipsy wings, because you don't. Spinelli sweet and tipsy wings has more than just alcohol and brown sugar. So what I need for you guys to do, stick with me through this video so I can show you exactly how I make these delicious wings. I'm telling you, you're really going to enjoy them. So stay with me as we go through this recipe and I'll see you on the other side. All right, everyone. Here is all the ingredients uh, we're going to use to make this recipe. So right here we have some salt that we're going to use, um, some flour, and we have this Grill Mates Brown Sugar Bourbon, which is a very, very good rub that you can use on multiple uh, meats. We also have some minced garlic. We have cayenne pepper. We're going to use uh, Christian Brothers Brandy, which is my favorite um, uh, alcoholic beverage um, so that's why I'm using it you can also use in uh, something like uh, Jack Daniels or another type of whiskey if you want also we have a uh, cornstarch water we have some brown sugar teriyaki um, some pineapple juice and we also have um, some uh, olive oil that we're going to use for this recipe and as you can see we also have our wings in the back and um, my favorite pan that I like to use uh, when I uh, bake my chicken. All right, so now I've already cleaned the meat and added it to the bowl. The first step we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle about a teaspoon to two, two teaspoons of uh, salt over your chicken. Again, you can add, you know, you can do it as much as um, use as much as you desire. But I use about two teaspoons of salt over my chicken. Um, and once you've added the salt, you want to mix it well over all pieces of the chicken. And then the next step you want to do is you want to take your grill mates, the brown sugar bourbon rub, and you want to add that to the chicken and sprinkle that over the top of the chicken. And using the same technique as the salt, just mix it very well into the chicken. And with the grill mates, I use about two tablespoons of our uh, grill mate seasoning. Um, it depends on how many pieces of chicken you have. Me, I'm, I'm using about 18 pieces of chicken. So two tablespoons is, is just enough to me. And the way I know it's enough is when I can see the seasoning on my chicken. That's how I know when I got enough seasoning on my chicken. I like to be able to pick the chicken up and see the seasoning um, uh, coated onto the um, whatever type of meat that I'm using. See, so you check out that piece. I see that, you see how you can see the seasoning uh, on that piece that is well seasoned. So these, these pieces are good to go and we're ready to start uh, cooking the chicken. All right guys, remember, don't forget to um, spray your pan with um, cooking spray it just makes it very easier to um, adjust the chicken as needed while you're cooking if you want to if you need to turn it over uh, if you don't put any cooking spray on it uh, typically what happens is the the chicken sticks to the grates and when you're trying to pull it up sometimes it detaches the skin from the meat and for me the skin is some of the best part of the chicken so I like for my skin to stay attached to my chicken, so um, it's best to use cooking spray um, when you're um, before you place your meat onto this pan. All right, so now I grab my favorite pan, and now we're going to um, add the chicken uh, to the pan. So again, as I always mentioned in in all my videos, and and even in the last video, is that you want to place your chicken about a half an inch apart to allow it to uh, room to cook. So I generally um, keep them a half inch apart. 
and I've already preheated my oven at this point to 400 uh, degrees. So once I place all the meat on the pan, all the chicken on the pan, I will be ready to place um, the pan into the oven so we can continue on with the recipe. And what I like about these these wings, guys, I, I really like my wings. Um, I don't really like the jumbo wings. I like the I like wings to be nice size. I don't like them too small, but I don't like jumbo wings either. I don't I don't want my wings coming out looking like they should be turkey wings. I like them to be a regular size. So these wings right here are perfect size. Um, that's why if you see my wings and you see hey why they're not that big is because I don't really like them that big. I like them to be regular. All right, so let's move on to the the next process. All right, as I mentioned before, the um, I preheated the oven to 400 degrees, so now it's nice and hot, and now it's time to put the wings into the oven. All right, now that we have the uh, chicken all seasoned and prepared and on the pan, it's time to transfer that pan to the oven so we can get these wings to uh, begin cooking. So we're going to set the timer for 25 minutes, and once it, once they're done, we're going to pull them out the oven, and then we're going to transfer them to the fryer. Now it's time for us to um, make the sauce. Um, so the first thing you need to do, you need to go ahead and heat your pan on medium heat, medium high heat. And once the pan is heated, you want to add some, add your, your uh, olive oil. And let's allow your olive oil to um, to heat up real quickly. And then after that, you want to add your garlic. So add your garlic, let it and cook your garlic in the pan for about 30 to 45 seconds. Try not to cook it too much. You don't want your garlic to burn. So that's why you want to continue to move it around and stir it. And do that to about 45, 30 to 45 seconds. Remember, not to let it burn. Nothing is worse than burnt garlic. If I use garlic and I burn it, I generally start over, all over. Whatever I'm cooking, if I burn my garlic, I start over. You don't want to, you want, you don't want to taste burnt garlic. Now, after you've cooked your garlic for 30 to 45 seconds, the next thing you want to do is you want to add your brandy. In my case, my brandy, or if you're using um, like Crown Royal or Jack Daniels or Evans Williams, um, you can. But in this case, in this step right here, I'm adding my Christian Brothers brandy. And you want to cook that for about um, one to two minutes. You want to simmer it for about one to two minutes um, and let it cook down a little bit. And make sure you um you stir it stir it every now and then, uh to kind of uh you know mix it with the garlic and uh, the olive oil. So you know you want to stir it every now and then. And also uh, remember you don't want you don't want to cook all your um your alcohol uh, out of the pan. So you want to make sure you have some left because you still you want that flavor. You know, remember, that's where the tipsy comes in. At. That's going to be the tipsy part of it, of this recipe. You, know, you want to make sure you taste a little of the alcohol. You don't want it overpower uh, the chicken, but you do want to have some alcohol flavor in it. So make sure you don't cook all the alcohol out of the uh, the pan while you're in this, pro in this step. Now, once you've um, cooked the... Um, the alcohol down and, and, and simmered it for one to two minutes. The next thing you want to do is you want to add your brown sugar. So add the brown sugar to the pan. Add your water. Add your teriyaki. Add your pineapple juice. And add your cayenne pepper. Now what you want to do is you want to mix all these ingredients together. 
And typically what I do is I bring it, um, I will bring this mixture to a boil. Once you bring it to a boil, what you want to do is you want to let it simmer for about 10 minutes. You see it's coming to a boil right now. And once it's to a boil, you want to give it a quick stir. And then after that, you want to reduce your heat to medium low and let it cook and simmer for about 10 minutes. So the wings have been inside uh, the oven for uh, about half the time. So let's take a look at the wings and see uh, their progress. As you can see, they're looking good. They're becoming crispy on the outside, which I love when the, my chicken wings are crispy. So everything seems to be um, looking pretty good with the chicken. So we're going to leave it in there for the additional uh, for the rest of the time. And then we're going to go over to our next step so we can have everything prepared by the time the chicken is finished. Cooking. While we're waiting on the chicken to finish cooking, we can um, start preparing the flour or the batter for us to dip the chicken in once it's done. So you want to take your um, flour that's in a bowl. That's about, um, I think I used about two cups of flour. And you want to take this um, table, uh, that's like two teaspoons. That's a teaspoon of salt. You want to use a teaspoon of salt. And then take about two tablespoons more of the grill mates, uh, brown sugar bourbon, and mix that into the flour again i'm a i'm a person that loves all my food seasons so in addition to when i season the chicken i always season the batter too so it just adds that extra flavor that i need when i'm eating chicken or any type of meat you know i like all my food to be seasoned okay now that you have your flour prepared and ready for the chicken um we can move on to the next step. All right. In this next step, what you want to do is you want to take about a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch and about a tablespoon and a half of water and combine the two and stir it until you have this, um, this smooth, milky substance. And what this does, this thickens the sauce so it's not watery. Uh, it enables it to coat the chicken instead of it wets the chicken. Okay, now, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to pour that cornstarch mixture into our sauce that we've, um, we're have we simmering on the stove after the 10 minutes. And you want to make sure you mix this um, real good. It might lump up in some areas once you pour it into the... Um, the pan sometimes cornstarch has the tendency to lump up so what all you have to do is just you know smash down on the lump you see and it'll you know it'll break it apart about two to three minutes you want to continue to mix it to make sure you get all the lumps out of it you don't want you don't want the um you don't want lumps in, in into your mixture so you want to make sure you you remove all the lumps out of the mixture and after those two two to three minutes of stirring the mixture, what you want to do is you want to simmer it and you want to simmer it. Um, I let mine simmer for about about 10 minutes and you will see you'll be able to notice it thickening during the time you simmer it while you simmer it. You'll see the sauce starts to thicken. And once that sauce starts to thicken, then you will know it's ready to pull um, to remove it from the heat. You don't want it so thick to where it, it does. You can't coat the chicken with it. So you want to make sure you want to have this nice uh, texture, not too drippy, but not too thick. All right, folks, the time has come. It's time to pull these wings out of the oven and let's take a look at them and see, um, see how they turned out. So far, so good. Take a look at them. Look at that. Look how crisp. Look how juicy. You know, I, I I can eat them just like that, to be honest with you. Give me a little bit of ranch and I can just go to work right now with them. But for the sake of this video, I'm not. I'm going to finish this recipe 
then once I finish this recipe, we're going to get to eating. All right, let's go to the next step. Let's move back over here to the sauce and check on the sauce. As you can see right here, the sauce is cooking down well. Now, can you see how the sauce is thickening? And now it's getting that glossy look. I probably let it cook for maybe about two more minutes, but after that, it's ready to go. So what I've done was I've placed my chicken into a bowl. I let it cool first and then I placed it into a bowl. Now you wanna take um, the seasoned flour that you uh, prepared from the leftover salt and the uh, grill mates uh, brown sugar bourbon rub. And you wanna place the, uh, the chicken, the, the cool chicken into the flour and coat it on all sides and shake the flour off and then place it on the cutting board. So you're going to do this with um, every piece of chicken. And once you complete that, we're going to go to the next step. All right. Um, also, just keep in mind, I've already preheated my fryer uh, to 350 degrees. So right now it's heating up. Um, and it'll be ready in a few minutes for us to, um, to fry the chicken. All right. So now that you got all the chicken, um, breaded, the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and drop the chicken into the, put the chicken into the basket. I generally, um, try not to overcrowd the basket. I generally put about, depending on how big this, uh, pieces of chicken, chickens are. Um, I generally only cook about eight to 10 at a time. Um, so, and also it, it depends on how big your, um, your fryer is. Uh, my fryer, I can generally cook about 10 pieces, uh, pretty good. Uh, but you know, eight is, is, is a good number though, to start with just about eight pieces at one time. And then you want to go ahead and drop the chicken into the, the hot grease. Uh, and make sure you get those, um, you shake it up a little bit. If you have some of the chicken that's, you know, still, on top of the grease, you want to make sure all the chicken is um, submerged uh, into the um, the grease. So we're gonna cook this for about um, we're cooking for about two to three minutes. Um, but generally, I let mine go for about three to four minutes. Again, I like my chicken extra crispy. So, but those who don't like it extra crispy, uh, cook it for about two to three minutes. But um, I generally keep mine in there for about three to four minutes. All right, let's take a look at our chicken. It's, and as you can see, it's um, the you got some pieces that's starting to float to the top. That's also an indication that that the chicken is done too. Once your pieces start floating to the top. But as you can see, the you know it's it's turning golden brown, that nice color. Um, that's what you want to see um, uh, as you're cooking your chicken. Okay, I think the chicken is ready to um, come out. So let me go ahead and take it out of the fryer and look at that color. Make sure you shake uh, off the excess um, oil as much as you can. That's how you want your chicken to look. You see that golden, co that golden color? It's crispy. Nice, solid pieces. This is looking good already, folks. Now grab a plate and transfer the chicken, uh, chicken wings onto the plate. And you want to continue uh, frying um, the remaining pieces of your chicken. Again, you're going to do it the same way. Uh, keep it in there for about two to three minutes or whatever your preference is um, in terms of if you like it crispy or you, you want it normal. So um, so you're going to continue this process with the remaining pieces of chicken. And once those pieces of chicken are done, uh, we'll move along uh, in the process. All right, now all my pieces of chicken have finally finished cooking. I've transferred them all onto a plate. So what we're going to do next is we're going to um, put the chicken into a, 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 a empty uh, bowl. So place all your chicken into an empty bowl. 
And the next thing you want to do is you want to pour your sauce over the chicken. And you can use as much sauce as you want. Again, I like my uh, chicken to have um, a lot of sauce on it. I like it to be saucy. You can also use uh, just a little sauce if you just wanted to uh, have that just it to have a little flavor to it but i generally add all my sauce to it um you want to cover it up give it a good shake to ensure that you coat all the chicken pieces into the sauce and once you re and remove the lid and look what we got you know in alabama we call this good eating or you may hear somebody say, them some good groceries. All right, so once you've shaken it up, take it, remove the chicken pieces and put them onto a plate. Look at this, folks. These chicken wings are looking real good. Take a look at them, folks. That is, look, this is, this is good groceries. All right, folks, looky here, looky here. This is what I call my sweet and tipsy wings. Look at that. Look at the sauce. The glaze. The crispiness of the chicken. This is what your chicken should look like. Please leave a comment below and let me know if this satisfies your appetite. Folks, you got to you have to try this recipe. You have to try this recipe. So now it's time for me to take a um, a bite of it so I can give you um an honest opinion. Um, bite into this to let you guys know how it tastes. And I'm telling you, it is absolutely amazing. You could taste the the brandy. You could taste the the brown sugar. It has a sweet but subtle um, alcoholic taste. It's not overpowering. Um, you could taste the uh, brown sugar bourbon rub on it. It's really, really good, folks. It's really good. I'm going to go ahead and sit down before these wings get uh, too cold. I love to eat my wings hot. I don't like cold chicken at all. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and I'm going to finish these wings. And I'm glad you guys stayed with me throughout the video, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, everyone. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. The wings turned out amazing. As you can see, the flavor was great. I know you guys are going to enjoy this recipe. So try it at home. And when you do, I'm interested in hearing your feedback. So come back and leave a comment. And if you like the video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe so you can be notified whenever I release a video. Also, share this with your friends. And until then, cooking with Spinelli, all wings, everything, and I'm out. Peace. Everybody stand up. Introducing the one and only, the most anticipated and highly underrated.